Hello again wrestling fans, it's me Tom Collihue with a bit of last minute Royal Rumble World Collide news. If you stay tuned we're going to be covering the name changes for the NXT Women's Championship, potentially with the main roster as well. A bit of detail on why there's only four women announced for the Rumble so far, a bit of information on NXT in the Rumble, as well as when we're expecting Brock Lesnar next, and finally I asked a friend of mine, Corey Guns, who's my podcast host over on Sports Kida, to help me record a Worlds Collide preview for it coming up this Saturday, so please stay tuned for that. Let's start with the NXT Women's Championship, which will be henceforth known as the NXT Championship. There is, of course, already an NXT Championship, but now there's going to be two, and you'll have context clues for which ones are men's and which ones are women's. From what I'm hearing, with Impact Wrestling recently crowning its first female world champion, we are now going to have a female world champion in NXT as well, but she will just be a champion and a world champion, and you'll have two world champions. Of course, when you look through, for example, Wikipedia or keeping history of these different wrestlers, you do see lists of women's championship, Raw Women's Championship, SmackDown Women's Championship. They want to make it clear that it's World Championship. This also goes hand in hand with a report I did recently on Sports Kida about John Cena not wanting to overtake Ric Flair's record for World Championships. It was a tongue-in-cheek joke at the time from a source, but they did say that the person who would overtake would undoubtedly be Charlotte Flair. That looks a little bit more true now if the change of name is coming. So far, we've only had four women announced for the Royal Rumble. There is an intention to this, not just differentiating from the men's rumble, but also it leaves the door open to a lot of possibilities. There aren't enough women between Raw and SmackDown, particularly with injuries at the moment, to have that be enough people to fill a whole rumble. We're definitely going to see some NXT people. Also, with the men's as packed as it is, we are very likely to see a lot of surprises in the women's rumble, much more so than the men's rumble. Kaylee Ray and Beth Phoenix are two names that I strongly believe will be in the Rumble that have been mentioned to me. We know Kaylee Ray is going to be there from NXT UK. She'll be there for Worlds Collide. Beth Phoenix, I just think, is an interesting story and a potential uh, surprise winner. I'd very much enjoy that myself. Triple H has spoken about the NXT men who may be in the Rumble. There are now 25 names who have been formally announced. Cain Velasquez has also suggested that he will be in the Royal Rumble. So I would expect to see him. I think it's pretty clear that I expected to see him even before he was announced, especially with his storyline ongoing with Brock Lesnar. I say ongoing, we haven't seen him much recently. We'll have to wait and see on that. But Triple H is teasing a few obvious choices in his words that he has suggested as people who could have big moments. The most obvious, as he described it, was Matt Riddle. Another person who is being teased is Finn Balor being teased by himself on Twitter, if you catch it recently. Finn Balor's got a lot of casual appeal. I reached out and asked the question about this one to see if he was someone they were thinking of. He's definitely a name they are thinking of and would like to have involved, mostly because I think there are a lot of people who will be watching the Royal Rumble who don't necessarily watch NXT. They're probably wondering where Finn Balor is. So I think it'd be a good moment there and something that could definitely be exciting for viewers even of NXT. With the Rumble this weekend, so many storylines are definitely going to be set in motion. The Raw after the Rumble is when I expect that we'll see Brock Lesnar again. Whatever happens in this match, whether he wins, whether he's eliminated, it is certain that Brock Lesnar needs to set a new storyline in motion. Now that could be with Cain Velasquez, it could even be with Dominic Mysterio. There are a multitude of possibilities, but Brock Lesnar is extremely likely to be booked for Raw this coming Monday. He's been gaining as much heat and hatred as possible with work of our truth work of Ricochet. He's been trying to get hold of as much of that so that whoever eliminates him gets a big pop. They will continue this storyline going forwards and build and build his WrestleMania opponent by working against Brock Lesnar. And that hopefully is what they plan to have build up his opponent. Even if it is Cain Velasquez, there's not a lot of heat behind him right now, but the more you hate Brock Lesnar, the more you are supposed to back Cain Velasquez. That is the plan. That is why we're going to see a lot of Brock Lesnar in future, more so than we previously have. And of course, that is the reason why we've seen him so much before the Rumble. You may have noticed this video is slightly longer than my typical videos. That is because as of right now and shortly after this, there will be a brief podcast section for a Worlds Collide preview with myself and my podcast host at Sports Kida, Corey Guns. Please give him a follow on Twitter and I hope you enjoy. 
All right, Tom. Well, here we are. It's Royal Rumble weekend. It's the kickoff to the road to WrestleMania. But before we get to the Royal Rumble on Sunday, it's going to be NXT and NXT UK Worlds Collide on Saturday night. And we've definitely a card that uh, I think a lot of fans are going to be happy with. And I'm looking forward to, to this show. Uh, hopefully a lot of people may even be some people's first real glimpse at the NXT UK roster. Um, so I think they've got some good offerings for us. So let's talk about what we're going to see Saturday night at Worlds Collide. We'll start with the kickoff show, newly announced women's match for the kickoff show. Uh, it's going to be Mia Yim against Kaylee Ray. What are your thoughts on this match? How do you see this one shaking down? It's genuinely going to be quite hard to pick winners in this because in the grand scheme of things, most of the matches don't technically matter. So it's really hard to say. With a kickoff show match as well, it's even more difficult to say because it, it technically matters even less in that regard. But in this one, I am a huge fan of Kaylee Ray. She is the NXT K champion. I've interviewed her on a couple of occasions. She's just a really nice person, which is very difficult to say when you see how magnificent a heel she is in the ring. I, I think because she's a champion, this will be her getting put over, especially when we can be confident of certain other results. So I think we'll get a solid match. Uh, Kaylee Ray, a, a very high flyer, very physical very aggressive. Mia Yim, obviously quite technical, very skilled in that regard, but can really go hardcore if need be. So we'll get a great match. Kaylee Ray takes it for me. Next, we'll have a tag team match that NXT fans, the people that follow NXT pretty closely, would probably call this a little bit of a dream match. Uh, team DIY will reunite Johnny Gargano and Tommaso Ciampa, who have had their issues in the past and have not necessarily always seen eye to eye, but they will reunite at least for one night here at Worlds Collide, and they will take on Mustache, Ma Mustache Mountain, easy for me to say, uh, Trent Seven and Tyler Bate. If, if just for nothing else, for in-ring work, I got to say, like I said, this is somewhat of a dream match uh, for wrestling fans and for NXT fans. How do you see this one playing out? This is one of those where no matter the result, I feel like the fans win. Like for, for me, I know it's a bit of hyperbole, but this is always going to be a great match. You've got four dedicated performers who can fight a range of styles, but are most known for high tempo, high pace, high impact. So this should be a lot of fun. So I do feel that with the reuniting of DIY and the momentum they will have coming into that, I do feel it's going to be their match. Tyler Bate and Trent Seven came off a, a mixed results show when it came to NXT UK. Trent Seven can afford a couple of losses. Tyler Bate um, only just recently won his first takeover match. So he's been slowly built, perked up, as it were. I feel both of them can afford the loss, given the quality of the match that we're going to get. So I think this will be DIY's moment, having reunited to really share that platform and do great things again. Next, we'll have the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, Angel Garza will be defending the championship against Isaiah Swerve Scott. Uh, and then two other challengers that have yet to be determined. Uh, so this will be a fatal four-way match for the NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Do you have any idea or, or any leadings about who those other two contenders will be? And then how do you see this one coming out at the end? Do we see Garza retain regardless, or could we might see a new Cruiserweight Champion crowned? There have been some spoilers out. I should let the uh, let the viewers in on this one. We are recording this before NXT goes out, so we, we don't know... Uh, who this is going to be like i say, there are some spoilers out there but they're not spoilers i've personally looked at but for me it doesn't really matter what the spoilers are in that regard because i think isaiah swerve scott is the only person who could feasibly become a new champion however with how short that would make angel garza's reign i would pretty confident that he will be the one retaining he's only just won the title from leo rush he hasn't featured much since but they're trying to make a big deal out of him and put his character over a big four-man war with him going over and, and really showing what he can do will be very good for him, very good for the brand, very good for the title. So I do think he will retain um, whoever the other two competitors will be. I hope they have a good showing as well. Yeah, we maybe should mention that, you know, the other two uh Participants will be determined uh, this Thursday. Uh, the two qualifying matches are Travis Banks going up against Brian Kendrick and then Ligero against Jordan Devlin. So two of those four uh, will be added into the match on Saturday. Well, next, we'll see a one-on-one -on -one encounter between Finn Balor 
and I'm probably going to mess up this name, so I apologize in advance. Aisha Dragunov. Was that good? Was that close? Ilya Dragunov. Ilya Dragunov. Okay, thank you. Uh, so they're going to go one-on-one. Uh, you know, Finn Balor kind of reasserting himself and, and developing this new persona over on NXT. Um, again, the in-ring work should be great. This almost seems like kind of a throwback to a Balor's independent days where he was traveling around the globe and taking on all these top contenders in, in different parts of, of the world. How do you see this one? Do you think Balor gets the win and kind of continues this this heel push, or uh, do we maybe see a little bit of an upset here? I don't think we'll see an upset. Dragunov has been getting a very good push on NXT UK. He was involved in the main event at NXT UK TakeOver. He's uh, had a few matches that have been quite high profile and a few main events in the intermeaning period. Uh, this is a big deal for him. He, of course, went uh, wrestled Cesaro in Cardiff. So he's had a good push. This will really help to expand the brand awareness for a very talented man, but I don't think they will risk doing anything to dent the mystique of Finn Balor right now. He came back to NXT, and since then he has been absolutely dominant. He's one of their strongest draws. He's one of their strongest overall personalities, and I don't see him losing for a long time on that brand. For me, Finn Balor definitely comes out with the win. Next, we'll have the NXT Women's Championship. Uh, champion Rhea Ripley will be going up against Tony Storm. A lot of people thought that this may be a title-for-title title match, uh, but unfortunately, Storm was unsuccessful in regaining the NXT UK Women's Championship in Blackpool, so it's just a straight one-on-one match with the NXT Women's Championship on the line. Interestingly enough, Ripley was the first ever NXT UK Women's Champion, and her reign was eventually brought to an end by Tony Storm. So these two have some history together, um, and then we'll get it on again on Saturday night. What do you think? Does Ripley continue to, to dominate here? Any chance whatsoever that maybe Storm, she doesn't win the UK Women's title, but maybe she pulls the NXT Women's Championship in an upset here? Or do we continue to see the dominance of Rhea Ripley? This isn't as cut and dry as some of the previous ones for me. Tony Storm could win this match and then move over to NXT full time, as uh, other people have. Look at Pete Dunn, for example. NXT UK is still a bit of a feeder uh, federation to NXT. You see the reaction to Tyler Bay after his match with Jordan Devlin. It looks like he may be moving out to Florida full time. So there is certainly a possibility, and the idea that Tony Storm could constantly have Rhea Ripley's number is a compelling story idea. So for me, I think it's more likely that she could win based on the lack of victory over the NXT UK Women's Champion. However, that said, Rhea Ripley is another one who is very recently a champion, and I think she is definitely supposed to be the pinnacle of NXT right now. With everything that's happened with Shayna Baszler, I think she has every chance of retaining because Shayna Baszler, whether or not she moves on or comes back, Rhea Ripley was built and built and built to really overcome a huge obstacle and immediately undercutting that is a dangerous thing to do. For me, this is still Rhea Ripley. And then finally, in our massive main event, uh, eight-man tag match, the Undisputed Era goes up against Imperium. Um, again, probably another dream match. The two biggest stables uh, on the brands of NXT and NXT UK going at it. Um, you know, both stables have a, have a lot of momentum. I think you could see this one going either way. I don't think you could make an argument for or against who the winner might be in this one. Um, how do you see this one shaking out? Do we see Undisputed Era you know, continue their role? Do we maybe give a little bit of a rub to Imperium and, and give them a win? And will the, maybe not the result of this match, but just the the overall excitement um, and magnitude of this match roll over it all and bleed over it all into Sunday at the in the Royal Rumble itself? I think it could. I think it certainly could. The fact that so many NXT UK stars or roster members, maybe I should say, are in Florida does suggest that we may see quite a few of them in the Royal Rumble, or at least one or two scattered around. So I think that could happen. Undisputed Era have history being in the Royal Rumble. Adam Cole was one of the first NXT stars to actually feature, even though he wasn't a champion at the time, which is a rarity, or at least was a rarity then. So I think that could happen. You may well have noticed that most of my predictions are for NXT victory. I do feel that this one will be an NXT UK victory. 
with the big main event when you consider that it is sort of an element of giants versus children at this point when you look at the physicality of, of the men in this match if it was an elimination match i think they'd want to protect adam cole from taking a pin more than they want to protect walter so i think in that regard it would have been undisputed era winning but it is not an elimination match and i think imperium will be the ones going over because at some point you look at walter and you think to yourself that man is just going to destroy everything. They did him dirty a little bit at Survivor Series. I don't think they will do that again. Yeah, we saw some some comments from Walter actually this week uh, where he mentioned that he wasn't really happy with the way that he was used at Survivor Series. I think he actually even called it a mistake to even have him involved in that event considering the way that they decided to use him. So, uh, you know, could this be a little a little bit of a way for the WWE to kind of, you know, maybe gloss over some wounds and, 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 you know, some hurt feelings maybe, or maybe to just reassure him that, hey, you know, just take it easy, big fellow. We've got big plans for you. Don't worry. You know, and maybe, you know, give him the win and just give him a, a little bit of a rub here to calm down any uneasiness that he may have, you know, or maybe a bad taste in his mouth that he had after the Survivor Series buildup and the way that he was used in that match. It's possible. He He's not had a good time in America to be completely honest, he had his passport and the actual NXT UK championship stolen. It's not just that. Obviously, his car was broken into and a lot of luggage and personal items were stolen that he's never got back. So he's had a bit of a rough time. He had that at Survivor Series. I think Imperium have been heavily featured and I think we'll see them a lot less featured in future, largely because of that. But my experience of Walter, he's one of those, what you see is what you get. Kayfabe and reality are very close for him. He's very passionate about what he does, and he takes that into the ring, and that's what he delivers. He is that man who will say to your face, I didn't like this, I did like this. My interview with him from Cardiff, he said he really doesn't care about the crowd's reaction, positive, negative, chance, anything like that. He just wants to go in there and compete. That's all he wants, and I do feel maybe that they're rubbing some wounds, as it were, and trying to ease those issues. I don't think he really needs to be coddled in that way. However, I I don't put it past WWE to do that regardless. I do think he'd be a deserved winner and his team period would be deserved winners. So we will have to see his comments. Certainly from his point, I do feel he was being honest in that regard. I do agree with him to an extent, but we will see how how he was used in future. I think he will in future stick to NXT UK as much as possible because I feel that's where he feels most at home. Well, it should be a great event. Um, I know a lot of people will probably look at this as just a lead-in uh, to the Royal Rumble on Sunday, but if you look at the card, uh, this should have a great chance of being you know, a standalone event. It's going to be able to stand on its own on two feet as a show on Saturday and should be some, some great viewing and really whet our appetite for uh, what we'll see Sunday at the Royal Rumble as well. I'm looking forward to it. Tom, appreciate you having me on your YouTube channel and, and having me over here. If you're a uh, subscriber and listener to, to Tom's channel here, uh, if you haven't heard before, uh, go over to the Sports Kita YouTube channel. Me and Tom have a podcast over there called Dropkick Discussions, uh, where every week me and Tom talk about all the news and rumors going around the wrestling business that week. Uh, we just recorded our Royal Rumble preview show that should be going up uh, probably tomorrow or the or the day after leading up to the Rumble. Uh, so you can get all of Tom's thoughts on the Royal Rumble event as well. Uh, so check that out. Give us a subscribe over on the Sports Kita YouTube channel as well as Tom's channel here. Um, and like I said, Tom, I appreciate you uh, having me over to, to your side of the, of the YouTube world. Yep, and for everybody who's listening to youtube please do give me the like and the subscribe because that is what keeps me going here and keeps feeding if you like this particular content please do let me know and i'll be sure to have Corey on more in the future thanks very much for coming on sir thank you